All right, so we're into the next day, and what a day it is. It is 84 degrees out. It is shortly before noon. The dew points are about 67. The dew points are going to jump up around 70, 71, and it will be a high of 89 degrees today. That's my kind of weather. I've been riding on a day. So after driving the truck last night coming home and then I took it out again and did a little bit of a test drive uh, it is sticky at the steering wheel so what I'm going to do is replace all four ball joints uh, that's coming in next week it's going to be kind of close because I got to get all the ball joints changed and still get ready to go camping I'm going to be a little busy as far as that goes but nothing that I can't handle even though in the past I've never needed it with the F-150 that we had and I most likely won't need it with this truck once I get this front end straightened out completely. We've never had sway control on the trailer, but I'm going to add sway control today. And it's real simple, and it's very easy. And if you don't have sway control on your trailer, uh, this is a cheap, inexpensive one to add. And there's really no reason not to. Uh, you're only talking about $30, $35 for the sway control, which I'll put a link down below for. If you click the link, you'll get the exact same one that I've got and the installation is going to be roughly the same. Now this is everything you get in the box. Uh, of course the instructions, some hardware, uh, the ball plate, and then the ball that goes to the uh, hitch, and then of course the sway control itself. And the way these things work is really basic. Let me show you how basic it is. Okay, right here and right here, just consider these brake pads. And then this part here would be like a brake caliper. And what it does is it squeezes through you cranking this down the bar that slides in and between these two brake pads. What happens is when the trailer starts to move the left and to the right, this moves in and out of these two brake pads, and the brake pads tighten down on this bar doesn't allow it to move as much. Let me show you what it looks like inside here. If you loosen this up quite a bit, it makes this thing slide real easy. And you can see that's what it is there. It just slides. That's all. Woohoo! Having fun now. <laughs> it's not real sophisticated. These things have a tendency to fall apart. You can bend them real easy if you don't take it off whenever you're backing or doing any kind of real tight turning, that kind of stuff. If you over tighten this, misadjust it, something like that, all that could cause problems. Um, this thing's kind of disposable. I'm sure after a period of time these brake pads come apart because they're not held in there very well. Um, they're just got the one rivet or the two rivets and they're bonded somehow. I, I just don't see this to be a really good sway control item as far as you know over a long period of time but I know people like in my case that don't have a trailer that's very heavy and don't depend on it for sway very often that goes quite a few years with these and on top of that you could if you wanted to add one to both sides of the trailer I'm not going to do that I don't need to do that but it's an option so let me show you what it takes to get this thing on the trailer so you're going to measure from the center of the ball 24 inches back and I kind of made a mark already and at that point that 24 inches back is where the center of the ball on that plate needs to be 24 is going to put it right about there. Now that I have this mark, this is where I want to put the center of the ball that's on that ball plate. So let me show you kind of what that should look like, and then we'll start marking for holes. Now, I'm going to tell you, before you do any drilling whatsoever, check on the opposite side of your beam underneath to make sure you don't have any cables or gas lines or anything like that that you may drill into. But what we're going to do is center it from top to bottom and of course put that ball right over that mark. So we're going to be right about there for the plate to be mounted. What I did is uh, just grabbed one of my uh, metal marking pencils and if you guys feel a little bite on you it's because you're on a step stool that has a bunch of spiders and eggs on it so that's what's biting you. What you can do if you'd like and this is the, probably the smartest thing to do is get a straight edge I mean, if you want to be absolutely perfect with this, draw that, and then you can see that your cross section will put you uh, right about there. Just as long as we get it real close, we'll be okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and mark some circles here. Do this one. You can see now 
the marks, this is where I have to drill my holes. Again, I need to check the back side. Here's a wire loom here. Other than that, everything's good, and I don't think I'm going to hit the wire loom. So the screws that you're putting in to the holes that you're going to drill are actually 3 8 in size. So they want you to drill a hole that's a little bit smaller than that, which is 11 30 seconds. 11 30 seconds is kind of an odd drill bit size, so make sure you have a pretty decent assortment of drill bits, and of course, uh, not only in the right size, but make sure it's a good quality bit that'll cut this steel. If you're going to put bolts in there, of course, whatever the size of bolt is, uh, you can just run it in. So like if you're going to use 3 8 inch bolts, you can just drill the whole 3 8 I think I'm going to try to use those screws that it came with just to see. I'm going to put a little bit of blue locker on it. So if you're not familiar with that, it's a thread compound and it's basically a glue that you put on the threads. So whenever you do put them in and it threads into the material, it doesn't come off. So let me drill these holes and we'll come back and uh, see what it's going to take for the plate to go in. Now that I have two holes drilled in opposite corners, I'm going to use this plate as a guide to make sure I get the rest of the holes centered. So I'm going to kind of use the plate so the bit don't walk around. Now I could get a little chisel out or a center punch and I could mark each hole in the center and that way the bit doesn't travel but this will do the same thing. Now you can see the bolts have lock washers that they come with that's in the kit but again I'm going to put some thread locker it's the blue stuff it's serviceable and it'll hold it a little bit better as far as the threads go and I'll put a couple of drops on that uh, before I run it in. Now I'm going to use my impact to run this in. It's a 14 millimeter head that you need a socket for, but you can just use a ratchet. These are self-tapping basically. Once you drill the hole, they'll tap the threads. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, get this thing to where I can start drilling the rest of the holes. So we'll put a couple of drops of special liquid on there. And the same with these. Hopefully that'll keep them from backing out because what I've read online as far as the reviews, some people say that these bolts have a tendency to back out. Got that one started. There's that. And there's that one. Now I'm going to go back to drilling, and uh, so far it looks pretty good. Okay, so I got you really close at this point. All the holes are drilled. You can see this is what they look like. Just put a little dabble on here of this fun stuff. Again, I'll grab my impact and run these in till they're tight. And then we'll see what it looks like at least with the ball connected on this end. Because of course I don't have the truck hooked up nor the hitch on the truck. So I can't really show you what it looks like overall. But I can show you what the bar looks like and how it needs adjusted. Now that I've got all those tight it, with that Loctite on them, if there's an issue with them backing out, then I'll definitely put bolts in. But I don't really see that in the near future. I will check tightness down the road. Next thing you're going to do is set up this part of the control arm with the clip like this. It just goes in and right back out. Um, and that's how it's going to hold the ball in. But you got to put the ball in there first. And then this will go through. And then I'll push it all the way to clip it in place. I'll show you what that looks like. Of course, the other end's roughly the same thing. Um, but it goes underneath the ball and uh, will hold it in place a little bit more. So let's go ahead and put on the back first. The front I'm not going to be able to do because, again, I don't have the hitch. So just put this on, and it's just like that. The clip goes all the way through, and now it can't come off without destroying that clip. Now, at this point, you would loosen this and then place this on the ball that's on your hitch for sway control. Then you tighten this down. And that adjusts those brake pads, how hard they're pushing on this. Now, with this tightened all the way down and snugged really hard, if you still find your trailer swaying, you can adjust this bolt by turning it more, a quarter of a turn, and then checking it out again, basically testing it again. What this does is changes the pivot point in which this plate is squeezing the brake pads whenever you tighten this. So I think this will be a nice addition. Again, you can see how easy it was. It's not very difficult at all. And for the amount of money that's involved, it's something to try if you have sway problems. I don't think that I'm going to have much of a sway issue with the truck, but this will give me some added security. So the sway control's basically installed, 
and all I got to do is test it out. I'll just do that another day when I got a little bit more time. Who knows when that will be. The uh, ball joints on the truck will be coming next week, and I got to take my daughter to work now, so if I don't come back, I hope to see you out there.